Good morning. Good morning. So happy to see you all here this morning. The Bible says to call the Sabbath a delight. And we are delighted, truly delighted, that you're here worshiping with us this morning. I wish I could extend a greeting to each and every one of you, but since I can't, I'm going to ask that you do it. I'd like for you to just stretch out behind you or in front of you or next to you and tell the person that you're greeting, I'm delighted you're here. Thank you so much for helping me to greet everyone that I wanted to greet this morning, which was every one of you. Thank you so much. Let's bow our uh, heads for a word of prayer this morning. Dear Father in heaven, I just thank you, Lord, for your Sabbath day. I thank you, Lord, that this is a time that we could come to fellowship with one another. I thank you, Lord, that this is a time that we could rest in you. And we're asking for your spirit to come upon us this morning. And Lord, we're also asking that you be with us as we commence our Sabbath school program, our discussion panel, and help um, the words that are spoken to honor and glorify your name. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have a special treat for Sabbath school this morning. We have a panel uh, discussion on our Pathways to Health event, and you all um, have inspired the questions, and we thank you for your questions. Um, our moderator this morning is Kyle Allen, and he is coming to us from ASI, and I'm assuming that Kyle lives in Maryland, where we used to live a few years ago. And so, Kyle, I want to give you a very warm Arizona welcome this morning. If you'd like to come up now and introduce the panel. Thank you so much, Pastor Cruz. And I'm going to ask the panel to come up at this time. And uh, good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. I forgot how wonderful Arizona weather is. You know how blessed you are. You guys probably know that, right? The rest of the country envies your weather. But we're very, very excited to be here. And I'm really excited about this panel because, you know, Pathway to Health is a very exciting topic to talk about. And uh, it is so exciting what God is going to do here in Phoenix over the next few months as we prepare for the largest Pathway event yet. Um, so we are really excited and um, we got a great panel. I'm going to let them do a quick introduction of themselves uh, but before we do that, before we do anything else, let's uh, have a word of prayer just to start off our, our time this morning. I'm going to ask Ken Denslow to start us off. And may we say something here today that will lift up Jesus and glorify your name. In, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The other thing I want to say to you before we uh, introduce our panelists is that today we're going to have, we have a number of questions we've already talked about, some topics we're going to go through with our panel this morning, but we want to also get some interaction from you. So we have a number up on the screen. It's a Phoenix 480 number for you. So you can text in your questions. If you have a phone, text in your questions and, and guys, it has to be about Pathway, okay? Not open field questions, but regarding Pathway or something that is relating to what we're talking about, text them in, and uh, my friend Thomas Beal is taking your questions. He's going to text them to me, and we'll ask some questions as we go through the discussion this morning, okay? If you don't have a phone and you have a burning question and you want to just ask a question, um, you can raise your hand at the end. We might have time for a couple, but I'm not sure because our time is limited. But let's go ahead and get started with quick introductions. And uh, we'll start with you, Brother Neville, and then we'll just go down the line. Um, my name is Neville Neffling. I hail from Namibia, that uh, country on the southwestern shore of Africa, just above South Africa, just below Angola. Uh, really nice country, very similar to you in Arizona. We have four deserts 
in our country, so we're pretty cool on that. We also have beautiful weather. We've got summer, 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 and summer, and I think this year winter was on a Thursday. <laughs> I'm Glenn Santa Ana. I'm from Arizona, and originally I'm from the Philippines, actually. And I'm in charge of the refugee ministries for the conference and some other departments. I'm Leela Lewis. I'm an OBGYN, and I'm the CEO and president of Your Best Pathway to Health. I'm Gerald Bobanejad, the coordinator for Muslim Ministries for the Pacific Union. I live in Los Angeles. Um, I'm originally from Iran. I'm Benny Moore. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for uh, Your Best Pathway to Health, and I live in College Hill, Tennessee. But I'm in Phoenix today, as you can see. <laughs> Happy Sabbath. My name is Yugana Woods. I'm a pediatrician here in Phoenix. I work at a local community health center. And my name is Ken Denslow. I work at the North American Division, and I am a board member of Pathways. All right, thank you so much, panelists, and uh, we are glad that you're all here. Excited uh, at the answers you're gonna bring to us here this morning. So actually, we already got a text question in, and it happens to be the first question that's on my list, so that's really cool. Thank you for texting that in. Um, so, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let anyone who wants to answer this, but the question is, what is your best pathway to health, and where did it come from? Well, Your Best Pathway to Health is a free mega clinic that provides free medical, dental, eye care, and surgical services to uninsured and underinsured populations. We started in 2013, the very first event. Ken will remember uh, some of the presentations in, in that event, basically pre-leading to up into the 2014 actual first event in San Francisco and Oakland. Nobody had ever done anything like it before. God inspired it, and we serviced 3,100 patients in San Francisco and Oakland in two and a half days. It was such an amazing miracle. It took the world by storm, helicopters flying overhead, the church by storm, and from there, it's just taken off. We did San Antonio, Los Angeles, 8,500 patients in two and a half days, Spokane, and Beckley, West Virginia, and now Phoenix. And, and Leela, just as an overview, I think about 23,000 patients, is that right? 23,000 patients to date have been serviced in these two and a half day and, blitzes and, and just under $90 million and in free health care. Uh, okay, 90, oh, did you catch that? $90 million in free health care. Amen, amen. Um, anybody hey, else? Ken? I, I just wanted Leela to talk about, tell where the first event was held. Great question. <laughs> That is a very good question. So, you know, we started out, uh, San, many of you will remember, San Francisco was where God told us to have the first event. And the question was where to have, which actually hold this event that nobody knew how to do, including myself or anybody else. And so in working with the government, um, they actually said to us, first of all, they said, you know, before we get involved and partner with you, we want to understand something. You know, people here in San Francisco might live different lives than you Christians, Seventh-day Adventists may do. We want to know that you're going to be supportive and accepting of all people. Oh, of course, of course, you know, that's what Jesus did. He, he didn't exclude anyone. Of course, we're accepting of everyone. Everyone can receive services. Okay, the man was super excited about that. He was actually the assistant to the mayor. And he said, yes, we would like you to hold your event in a certain facility called the Armory in San Francisco. And I thought, wow, this is wonderful. He starts making phone calls right there when we're sitting there. I take my three little children and my one bigger child to the armory and knocked on the door thinking, well, we'll just take a tour, right? I mean, that was what you would think to do. You want to take a tour of the facility where you're going to hold the event. And this very large gentleman came to the door and opened the door and kind of looked down at me and said, ma'am, what are you doing here? Oh, sir, we just want to take a tour. We just want to look around and see what the facility is like. Ma'am, you're going to take these little children in here? I said, well, yes. Can I not come inside? Ma'am, do you not realize that this is an adult film studio? Why are you doing this? And I said, oh, oh. And he's like, do you still think you want to come? No, no, I don't, I don't want to come in. Thank you so much. It ends up God still wanted us to do the event Amen. at the armory. Mm. We had the other side of the facility. There was a dividing wall, and God used that to bring unbelievable light to that building. It was a beautiful opportunity. And, and we're going to mention later in the, in the panel about how that impacted one of the officials from the city of San Francisco. We'll come back to it, okay? So, so hold on to your seats, because we'll come back to that story. But what an incredible testimony. Now, um, there, there's so much that we could touch on, but I want to ask the panel a question. 
as we look at the work of Pathway to Health and this type of medical missionary work, meeting people's needs, um, what is the biblical foundation for why we do this work as Seventh-day Adventists? Well, for me, it, 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 it really falls to several passages of Scripture. Micah, uh, Micah 6, uh, Isaiah 58, and Matthew 25. Those, those three uh, chapters really, for me, have been the, 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 the driving scriptural basis. And I know at least one of those is going to be touched on in the sermon this morning, so uh, I, I will stay, stay, stay awake and, and uh, be ready to hear that sermon that deals with one of those three passages. So definitely stay for church. Definitely stay for church. <laughs> uh, not because I'm preaching, somebody else is preaching. Okay, awesome. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, that, we'll look forward to that. Um, but so, so a couple of scripture passages that, that, that Brother Ken mentioned. Anybody else, what is the biblical foundation? Why do we do these types of events? If I may. Please. You know, the opening, um, in my opinion, the, the inauguration of Jesus' ministry um, on that beautiful Sabbath day when he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has appointed me to preach good news to the poor, to bring healing of sight and take on the affliction. And so one of the things we understand, if we are to represent Jesus, and the word Christian basically means like Christ. And so... The essential part of it is to be a blessing to people. And, and looking at Jesus' ministry, he was nothing but blessing to people. And if we are to walk in his footsteps, we cannot do anything less. And so looking at the misery and look at all the affliction, look at all the pain, and especially with, you know, with the health coverages that are, are so in such turmoil today in America, this is excellent news which really would confirm the message of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, thank you. Yes, uh, Neville, you have a comment? Yeah, one of the passages that they did not mention yet, but for me, um, reading of all about these things that you are doing and seeing some of the photos and clips, I think Acts 8, um, the first part of Acts 8 to me is very apt, where, um, you know, Saul was persecuting the church, and um, we read about the, the Christians in Jerusalem that were scattered throughout all the regions of Judea and, and Samaria. And then Paul creates havoc, havoc, obviously dragging people out. And then it, the text says um, in verse 4, Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. And then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which they did. And I think that's exactly what these guys are doing. They, they're actually creating and, and doing miracles and people are heeding the message and coming to Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for, for mentioning that. Now, I want to I circle back to a text that Ken mentioned. That's Isaiah 58. And I want to go to you, Leela, because I know this is a particular burden of yours. And as we look at the foundation for why we do Pathway, in particular, as we look at the world around us, we've all been seeing the tragedies that have been happening in our world of, of, of recent times. And, and the reminders, as we said last night, that Jesus is coming soon. How do we connect what the Bible says in Isaiah 58 and the proclamation of the Seventh-day Adventist message in these last days, how does that connect to what Pathway is doing? You know, for me, I, I find that we have a tendency as human beings to have a really hard time with Christ's righteousness alone. Mm -hmm. At least for me personally, I don't know how many of our people in the congregation, you know, it seems like we want to figure out a way. There's got to be a way we can work our, our way into heaven. I mean, maybe if we heal one more person, maybe if we clothe one more person, even the, even the health message itself can sometimes be right. um, self-righteousness, mm. if you will. But with Jesus' righteousness, we talked about this last night, Kyle, in our presentation. With Jesus' righteousness as our breastplate, as the clothing, as the robe, his righteousness around us, living out. And we can't, we can't ask, we can't, we can't put that on ourselves. Jesus puts that on us. And we Amen. ask him to put that on. We get the opportunity to ask him to do it, but he puts it on us. Amen. So once he gives us that because he loves us, he wants to give us his character and his righteousness and his love for humanity. It just comes welling. I mean, you can't hold it back. It just comes out. You want to help other people. You want to show them his love. 
And out of that comes this desire to share all of his love. And that's what Pathway is. It's sharing the entire whole person love that Jesus has for humanity, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual healing to those of us who are hurting. And I think every single one of us on this planet is hurting. Amen, amen. Benny? Well, the exciting thing about it is that this is something that people respond to. Mm. I mean, when you go out the doors and you see thousands of people lined up, uh, Mark Finley and I went out one morning in LA and counted the people in the dental line and we counted 2,400 people. Wow. Just in the dental line that morning. Some of them had uh, been there all night. Right. And you know, I mean, what else do we do that we have people lining up by the thousands to come to us for help? Hmm. I've told our pastors, wouldn't you love to see a thousand people lined up outside your church door waiting to get in? You know, well, here we do have those thousands of people, but it's because we are meeting what is a known need. They know they have health problems. They know they need help. You know, even if they knew, which they may not, that they had spiritual problems, they're not really sure. It's a very confusing world with all the things that are out there and all the denominations and all today. It, where do you go? Where do you turn? And, but when it comes to health, they know what they need and they're willing to come and they'll line up by the thousands to get those services. Amen. Thank you, Benny. Ken? One of the things that I really uh, like about Pathways, though, is that it doesn't limit itself just to physical health. Um, it, it does, as you said, it ties in all that mind, body, spirit. Uh, a person can come to a Pathways event and, and get a new suit of clothes to go for a job interview. A person can come to, to Pathways and get a haircut so they feel better about themselves emotionally. Uh, they, they can come in and, and get many, many different needs met. Uh, I think your, uh, your, the story last night of, of the young woman who, who she had the, 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 I guess it was a Page. growth. Oh, no, no, C Carolina. Neva. Carolina. <laughs> you know, yes. she had that removed. And yes. that didn't just, that wasn't just a physical issue. It was an emotional issue yes, that was right. being addressed that's there. Right. And uh, there were uh, story after story after story like that. They can go see, we don't force it on them, but they have the opportunity to sit and talk to a chaplain about right. their spiritual life. And uh, they're just, every aspect of life is covered in a Pathways event. Amen, amen. Thank you. It reminds us. Oh, no, I'm just going to go ahead, Leela, and then I'm going to... I just wanted to tell or to remind us of that one story from San Francisco that, Ken, you just basically alluded to. There was a gentleman, remember, that had, he had lost his job. He had just moved from, from Texas, I believe. He had two little children, a single father. The little children were, I think, two and four years of age, nowhere to live. They were homeless on the street. He was walking down the street, pushing this stroller that he had mm. found in some dumpster somewhere with his children, wondering, how am I going to get a job? He'd lost his two front teeth because he had fallen and somehow they had broken off, didn't have his two front teeth, couldn't get a job anywhere. And he was crying out to God, God, what am I going to do? I've got these little children. I have nowhere to go. What am I going to do? And just then, no joke, a flyer flew through the air with the wind and it got stuck in the spokes of his stroller. And he you know, reached down, picked up this little flyer and lo and behold, it was said it was offering free dental care and medical care at the facility at the armory in San Francisco. So guess where he went with his two babies? Straight to the armory. He was the very first Amen. person in line. He was the very first person in the dental unit to be treated. He got his teeth fixed. He got a new suit. He went straight from there to a job placement agency, and God got him a job. Amen. And he praised God for praise that. Praise God. Amen. Powerful. Powerful. Um, yeah, so we'll come to you in a minute, but let me just, let me just, we'll move on here. But I think that as we think about the foundation for why we do, why we do what we do with Pathway, it seems that <laughs> Ken is burning. Okay, Ken. All right. I'll, I'll let you because you're my boss. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just have to say, you know, we spend so much time in the Seventh-day Adventist church, especially these days, anguishing over the departure of young people from our church. And I'm, I want to tell you that one of the things that will keep our young people is if they see us engaged in this sort of work. That's right. They are tired. They are sick and tired of sitting around listening to us old people talk. They want to see action. They want to see people's Amen. lives Amen. changed. And this is a way to engage young people in meaningful ways that will show them 
that the church is serious about the love of Christ, sharing the love Amen. of Christ in our world. Thank you. Just had to say. Sorry. Thank you, Ken. And I'm going to be fair to Glenn because he's had his, he wanted to make a quick comment. You know, I, I'll be short. I'll be quick. I've heard a lot of comments about best pathways to help. And then every time I would hear comments, something like, you know, and I would always tell them, you know what? This is the best pathways to help. Amen. For the reason is this one. Because it unites the brethren. Amen. Regardless of who, regardless of race, whether you're coming from Iran, Iraq, or from the Philippines, it unites the church. And that's the best. Amen. Thank you so much. So I'm just going to thank you guys for your comments. As I listen to you talk and as I listen to you comment on the biblical foundation, one, th one uh, statement from the Spirit of Prophecy, and I can't remember it word for word, but basically the idea is that what the world needs is a revelation of the character of God, a revelation of God's love. And I think that's what I see most clearly in Pathway, a revelation of God's love for humanity. Amen? And that's what people are hungering and thirsting for. That's why thousands of people line up, because they see people who actually care about them. So, so that, that's a foundation for why we do what we do. Now, we're going to get into a couple of things here. Uh, we had a question that came in, and this is on my list too, so it's a good question to ask. As we look at this event in Phoenix, um, some people are asking, why Christmas? And I'm going to ask you, Leila, because... I'm not going to put it on you, but I know this was kind of your idea. So, Leela, why Christmas? I mean, this is a family day, right? Why would we do Pathway on Christmas Day? Very good question, whoever asked the question. Um, first of all, I have a question for you. What does the world celebrate at Christmas? The birth of Jesus. Regardless of whether we believe it's the exact day or not, the whole world, whether you're a secularist, a non-Christian of any sort, other religion, Muslim, whatever, the world in one capacity or another celebrates the birth of Jesus. The gift of God, right? The gift of God of eternal life, eternal health, if you will, through the birth of Jesus. What better day to share the gift of life, whole person life, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health with those in need. It's a beautiful opportunity, and as our panelists are going to tell you in just a few minutes, it's not just an opportunity for Phoenix. I believe it's an opportunity for the whole world by God's grace. Amen. So this is an opportunity for you to give back this Christmas. You can be the gift. You can be the gift. You can actually be the Christmas gift to someone. Beautiful, beautiful. And Phoenix is not that cold. So anybody watching online, you're not from Phoenix, it's a great place to come for Christmas. Uh, we want you here, right? Okay. So um, question to our panel. Um, who comes to these types of events? You know, we've had, you said 23,000 people, Dr. Leela. Um, what, who comes to this? And as a related question, you know, we know there's free clinics out there. Uh, in, 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 in Phoenix, we know there's already free clinics that exist that service the needs of people. What makes um, Pathway different for those people who come? So everybody comes to Pathways. I've gone to several events and you meet church members, people from all over who just don't have access to care. Sometimes it's because of their work schedule or they just don't have insurance, transportation. There's lots of reasons, but everybody who comes has a need and we're there to meet that need. Dr. Yugon, I have a question for you. <laughs> why, why do you as a provider keep coming and volunteering? Well, I love it. I feel like it's addictive because I get to practice medicine in a different way. I get to pray with my patients. And I occasionally pray with my patients um, at my current job, but I get to pray with every patient, every family, and everybody just has tears in their eyes because they've never had a provider pray for them um, to care enough to um, also try to help them meet their spiritual needs. And I feel like I can do so much more for them because not only can I help them physically, but I can also point them um, to the healer who can heal them spiritually and meet all of their needs. Now, doctor, you've got a question for you. Okay, now, what is your medical specialty? Pediatrics, You're I'm a pediatrician. She's a pediatrician, all right. So, from a medical perspective, and I'm not a doctor, as you guys know last night, I have no idea any of that medical lingo. I don't even know how to hold a stethoscope. But from a medical perspective, what makes Pathway different from another clinic out there? So we can meet all of their needs in that they come in if they need medical, if they need dental, we can help them with that. But then also, 
we take it a step further and see what else do they need. Do they need food? Do they need clothing? Um, do their children need toys? Um, do they need the vaccines? There's all sorts of things. And then emotionally, do they need counseling? Do they need to speak to someone about their lifestyle? Like, yes, I can say you have diabetes, but what's next? Well, then they have lifestyle counseling that's offered through Weimar, and they can talk to them about ways that they can naturally reverse their diabetes. And I, I think I heard last night in four weeks or wow. less. That's right. So that's something that we actually aren't even trained in medical school to offer like um, natural remedies and lifestyle. We don't get any training on um, healthy eating and things like that. And so we get to do all of those things. And then we also um, can point them to other clinics and other places that they can further get more of their needs met. And I think the most important thing is that every patient that comes through Pathways gets to stop and meet with a chaplain mm. who can talk to them about things like depression, anxiety, stress, all these things that we know play such a crucial impact in their, um, in their medical illnesses. We were, we, t we were taught in medical school that about 70% of your illnesses are psychological. So we are really able to meet that aspect of their medical needs because they can go meet with this chaplain who can pray with them and point them to, the G to Jesus. They also receive books and Bibles, um, religious books and Bibles, and then Bible studies. And then ultimately, they're pointed to a health information center where they can learn more about their, um, their maker and their healer. Thank you, Doctor. So let me, let me go to Benny, and I'm gonna follow up on that, Benny. We heard from her the medical side, why, what makes us different you know, in terms of whole person care, but we also heard the spiritual side, and I think that's an important point to touch on here. Why is the spiritual aspect of Pathway so important, and what does Pathway provide that connects people uh, to spiritual growth? Well, Jesus, when the disciples were talking to them, and they said, well, show us the Father, and he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Hmm. And, but we don't know the way. And he says, I am the way, the life, and the truth. Hmm. So by pointing people to Jesus, we are actually dealing with their physical needs. There's something that's different about what Pathway does. And Leela and I were earlier this week on 3ABN. Was it this week? Was it last? Oh, it was last week. Okay. Oh, yes, it was because last Sunday, it was earlier this week that it was shown. On Sunday on 3ABN Today, we were there and we were talking. And as, uh, as part of that, uh, Dr. Hart from Loma Linda joined us. And he, one of the things that he explained was about the difference between a health fair, which is the way we have done business a lot of time, and a Pathway to Health event, which is a mega clinic. What was the difference? How did he explain that difference, Lita? You remember? So the difference, really, I mean, and for those of you, how many of you are familiar with Pathway to Health? Have you seen the videos, seen? So a lot of our congregation, there's some in the congregation that haven't, and our viewing audience, too. Pathway is essentially, if you close your eyes, imagine a hospital on wheels. That mm. is exactly what it really is. I mean, it really is a hospital on wheels. We have surgical procedures, I mean, major surgical procedures that are being done even on the floor of the convention hall. And I'm sorry, you were going to Well, I was going to just say, because that was one of the questions that came in, what types of procedures exactly. happen Exactly. I mean, Pathway? we will take off, um, a lipoma is a, essentially a benign fat mass. We've taken off lipomas the size of footballs under local anesthesia on the wow. floor of the armory, actually. Uh, but we've done it on all of our convention halls. We do some pretty, pretty um, in, in interesting procedures on the floor. We'll do hysteroscopies, cystoscopies. I'm a gynecologist. Those are scopes I of the no uterus. I have no idea. What, okay. Scopes of the uterus, scopes of the bladder on the floor. This time around in Phoenix, we're going to be adding something called conscious sedation, which is, you know, you've heard of twilight zone where you get a colonoscopy, et cetera. We'll be adding that. So there's a lot of stuff. We have a CT scanner that will be present on site. We've had mammography on site, a full radiology department, uh, a full laboratory services, pharmacy, up to three months supply of medication. It is truly a hospital on so, wheels. So truly, I mean, there's every kind of, of service, medical service there. Literally, yeah, the whole span. It's a hospital. It's a hospital, yeah. And, and all those things, the procedures that you mentioned, that's great. I've never heard of them. <laughs> and what Dr. Hart pointed out is that we can have these health fairs and we can tell people about things. Mm -hmm. But we've got to get to, if we want to really be effective, we've got to do something about it, not just tell them about it. Right. So um, I want to take us back to the spiritual impact question. 
And uh, Leela, I'm going to ask you to, to comment on this because I know you're very passionate about this, and that is the health information centers or the HICs. This is an important part of Pathway because Pathway is not just the event that happens in the convention center. It's also what happens after that's, that's so important. So tell us about the HICs, and maybe we can have a little discussion about why that's so important. And before, can, before let me, can, if I may say something before she please. answers that, that is one of the questions that people often ask. It's all fine and good that you pop into town, but then you pop back out. What happens to the people after you're gone? That's one of the things that people want answers to who are not familiar with Pathways. Some have the mistaken idea that once we finish up for that day or those days, we just disappear and there's no more engagement. Just a flash in the pan. So that Thank you, Ken. That's yeah. really important. You know, both as a medical provider, as a physician, but as a Christian physician, that is something that we were intent upon not doing. And I completely recognize that. Sometimes uh, medical mission trips will go overseas and they'll do a great work and then they're gone and they're gone and there's no follow-up. So that's exactly what the health information, health information centers are. They are our Seventh-day Adventist churches uh, where patients will pick up their lab results, their pathology reports, their glasses, et cetera. And then and they will be continued to offer health courses on an ongoing basis. Okay, so, and I'm getting questions that are coming in right now. Thank you, Thomas. You, thank you guys for texting in your questions. Uh, someone's asking, what is a health information center? So just to clarify, Ken and Leela, a health information center is a? Well, it's where, it's where, it is where the local church gets involved. Right. So this church here could be a health information it, center. It, could, right? it will be, I trust. It is, it is <laughs> one. You can see your current HICs. If your church is not mentioned on there, go to your pastor, go to your board, and ask to become a health right. information you, you center. You can see we have room for one more. Uh, we, have room for, <laughs> we have room for a lot more, Oh, you guys. mean we could have another slide? You know, we could have a whole <laughs> bunch. A In Los Angeles, there was like 75 there, health information centers. Are, are, are you telling me, I mean... Every single church in Phoenix should be at HIC, amen? Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. And you know, I, Kyle, if you yes. don't mind, I mean, you know this is my passion. I know. You know, it, it, this is really where I get excited, okay, guys? So if you look at the screen up here, this is just, guys, look at L.A. Come on, this is Phoenix. This is my hometown. How many of your churches are not on an HIC? Raise your hand if your church is not an HIC. Okay, how many of you are going to go back to your pastor and say, hey, I want to be an HIC? Amen. 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 We need more, and particularly we need more Spanish churches. We are expecting probably 70 to 80 percent of the patients will be Spanish speaking. So we really need a lot more in that area. But if you go back to the map, I want to show you how patients are determined which HIC they go to. Um, if you can show the map. So basically the patients come in, they talk to the doctors, they talk to the providers, and the providers say, you know what? You have diabetes. We would love to send you to our Diabetes Undone course. They look at a map. They look at their zip code. They say, you know what? This church is offering it in your particular language. It's closest to your house. We're going to recommend that you go to that church. If you go back to the other slide, you'll see all the churches. The church is then listed and circled on the patient's paperwork, as well as it's documented within our paperwork, which then was well, documented within Thomas's computer system. I'm sorry, Thomas, not paperwork. Um, in your computer <laughs> system, Thomas, which is then shared with our pastors and our local churches, and then it's up to the churches, it's up to us, church members, lay church members, amen? Yeah. Amen. amen. And look at, let's look amen. at the next slide <laughs> and see the kind of things that can happen at the churches. Really quick, and then I'm going to pull us because we, we are out running know, quickly running on time. time. So this is the 424. Okay, but actually, actually, Kyle. We're going to talk about this. But we got it. Yeah, we're talking about this later. I want to bring in my special guests here that haven't yes. gotten to talk yet, right. really, about yes. there as we're talking about the HIC. That's right. So, so let's just uh, let's just bring this in here. And there are three. We like to talk about three levels of impact that Pathway to Health has on on the area where we go. The first one, and we've already talked about it, is the impact on the patients. Right. The people who come are greatly impacted by this event. Right. The second impact is the impact on the volunteers. And we've already heard Dr. Uh, Ugana talk about that, others. It impacts those who volunteer. And finally, the impact on the community. So we'll touch on these briefly, but let's go to the impact on the patients, the HICs. And I'm going to ask um, a question to our panelists um, regarding specifically the refugee focus. And I know last night we heard about the refugee population in Phoenix, how it's just a huge percentage of the population here. How does an event like this help meet that need, and what can we do as uh, churches in the area to help connect with the refugee populations to meet their needs as a part of this event? 
First of all, you know, Arizona is the hub for the uh, refugees who are coming from other countries. Mm. At this time, we have three um, group, uh, la uh, language group that are really um, in need. Uh, number one is the, the Burmese, Burmese people. Uh, we have, for the last year, we have uh, the, the Arizona, state of Arizona accepted, accepted like, uh, for the Burmese, we have about 300 uh, people. At this time, the, uh, the highest are the Syrians. Mm. We have about 820 Syrians who have come here from, wow. from their country. Now, the impact, when it comes to impact, I think um, uh, this will really provide a, a big help for them, mm. especially those who are really uh, uh, sick. You know, it, it has something to do with culture, especially from Asia. I'm from Asia. Uh, when it comes to uh, going to a public place and, you know, seeking medical help, this is really hard for Asian people like, like me. Uh, even those who are from uh, Congo, from other countries like Iraq, maybe. But the best thing that, that will happen for this is that, you know, it will, it will, be, it will pave the way for us as, as, um, as a church to connect to them, with them. Right. And this will really help them to, to realize and to know that we are here for them. We have our refugee ministries in Arizona conference. But at the same time, we are trying to connect with the state of Arizona. We are trying to connect with them. Here in Arizona, we, we only have three recognized agencies of the state. And now as, an, as a Seventh-day Adventist, our goal is to have the license and to be connected with the state, especially with the refugees. And I think the impact that will, uh, uh, that will, be, uh, that will uh, be given to the refugees are really very, very uh, good. Amen, amen. And so, Glenn, uh, you want to comment, Leela, on that? Well, I was just going to say, so that, that impact, is, it's hard to measure. And, you know, these are people that are, are outcasts. They don't have anywhere else to go. And here is an opportunity for them to see the love of Jesus in a very practical way through Pathway. Now, I, I want to just mention, because it's not just the refugees here locally, but we're going to see a, an, ability, an effort to reach those who are not only here, but also in other places around the world uh, through this, through this, through this uh, outreach. Leela, do you want to comment quickly on that? And then Neville, I think, okay. has a comment. And then a comment. also Gerald yes, has some absolutely. comments as far as our 1040 is concerned. So what, this is what I'm really excited about, you guys. And our viewing audience right now, our live stream, get ready. This is going to be the biggest thing ever, I believe. So... What we're looking at is not just our refugees here within the state of Arizona. So we have Syria, Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia, we have Burma, we have Thai, we have Congolese, Rwandis, the list goes on and on. But those people obviously still have family members in their own home countries, right? right. So here's the idea, and we've already got it scheduled for Congo. We are going to have a simultaneous Christmas gift because each one of us can be the Christmas gift Amen. to someone, whether you're in Congo or whether you're in Arizona, right? Amen. If you're a Christian Seventh-day Adventist, you can be a gift wherever you are. So we're going to actually have an event taking place in Congo simultaneous, and we're hoping to work with some other um, conferences and divisions where they will be doing a similar event on their scale and they're in their local country providing health care so that the Congolese refugees here in Arizona and other refugees can know my home family, not necessarily family, my home country is being benefited as well. AWR, Adventist World Radio, is providing us with God pods and other things, and I know Neville has some interesting information as well, so we're going to be simultaneously affecting the world. So, Neville, thank you very much. Maybe I can have your mic here. Neville, you have done a lot of work with uh, the technology side and getting the message out through cell phones. How can this event in Phoenix literally reach the whole world? Yeah, um, maybe I should start with telling you that um, when I started off in broadcasting uh, a couple of years back, way back, my mandate was to go from South Africa to Namibia, and my mandate was to reach a group of people that would be alien to myself, really. Um, and I had to reach them to make sure that they got the information that they needed to know about the transition that was going to come politically as far as Namibia becoming an independent country. They needed to get that information and stuff like that. Now, what he has said here about the refugees and what they have said exactly fulfills that experience that, that I've had. Because 
it's good to have the refugees here, and it's good to have the services, because that's really important. But like he said, it's very hard to go, because they'll be scared that they are going to be deported. There's a lot of other fears that they might have. So somehow or the other, you have got to get this information through to that specific group or people. And now that's not so easy because they won't have permanent addresses, um, they might not have homes, they might not have cars, they might not have a lot of other things, but you will find that the one thing they do have is cell phones. Mm. They will have them and they will have data and you can connect with those people and make sure that they have enough information, enough um, of everything that they can understand what is available, and it must give them that security that nothing's going to happen to them. It's going to be okay. They can come. And that's where I come in, because that's what I can help you with. That's what I can and, give you. And Neville, thank, this is really exciting. And this afternoon, you're going to be talking more about that. People can find out more about that. And Glenn, also, um, you're going to be as a resource for the Phoenix area on how to connect with those refugee populations for churches that need to do that. I'm going to jump really quick. i got to jump to Gerald. Real, real quick. Uh, the refugees are landed immigrants. Mm. I just want to make it clear. Because we have some refugees here today. They are landed immigrants. These are not undocumented. They are documented people. They, they, are, they work here. They, you know, they're professionals, most of them. And um, when they come here to Arizona, um, there are only three agencies that, would, that they know. And long before that, they, they don't know, even know the Seventh-day Adventists. And I think this best pathway to help will provide ways and means, as what I've said earlier, that we are here, that we will welcome them here in Arizona. Amen. Thank you so much, Glenn. Now, Gerald, I'm going to go to you because one of the populations that is probably one of the hardest for us to reach is the Islamic community. And you have a particular burden and a particular uh, skill at reaching that community. Tell us how this kind of event can help us to reach the Muslims in our area. I think this would be an unprecedented opportunity to reach the Islamic community, both here and as Dr. Lewis said, all over the world. Um, last night, if you remember, uh, we say the probably the, the framework of the health message of the Adventist church is not the cures and the preventions, it's what we eat, correct? The Islamic community relates to that in, a, in an incredible way. One Muslim cleric uh, from a European country, he called us and he said, on your show, you said, you don't eat pork. We don't eat pork. Mm. You don't drink alcohol. We don't drink alcohol. He said, you don't gamble. We don't gamble. He said, you don't smoke. And he paused a little bit and he said, we're not supposed to smoke. <laughs> and then at the end, he said, my brother, you're a Muslim. He said, you're a Muslim. You see, in the mind of an average Muslim, a Christian eats pork, drinks beer, smokes like a chimney. This has a great it connotates, it resonates with the Muslim community because first of all, it opens the door for them to hear because one Muslim man said, if what goes in your mouth is clean, what comes out of it is worth listening. Mm. And so one of the greatest advantages, the uniqueness of the Advent movement is how God has endowed this movement even with the simplest of, of the means. And so the Muslim community, once they come in, in contact with the, with the Adventist community, one of the things that they say you're different. You're so different, we're beginning to find out that our book, the Quran, when it speaks about the people of the book and their uniqueness and how we as Muslims are supposed to ask you when we are in doubt and confusion, we're beginning to realize that it is you and your community that our Quran has spoken about 1400 years ago. Wow, wow. And so given the authority that the Quran has already given us, that paves the way for us to bring the health message with such authority that the Muslims are not gonna just hear it, but apply it and take it even further. That's incredible. And, and Gerald, we could talk a lot more, I'm sure, about this topic. How do people find out more about how to reach Muslims, how to use I will be here this ministry? afternoon at, I think, 3.30, 3.30 to 5. I will uh, hold a, 
a workshop, okay. a condensed crash course seminar, and, and I invite you guys, if you're interested in how to reach the about 100,000, I think, wow. Muslims in, in the greater Phoenix area, then join us. Huge opportunity. What a, great, uh, what a great opportunity we have to reach people in this area, not only of the Muslim community, but of all these refugee uh, populations. God has called us to reach people in the name of Jesus Christ. And by the way, just one thing I want to say. To come to Pathway to Health, because we had a comment, a question here, what does it take to, to come? All you have to do is have a heartbeat. <laughs> and a smile. And a smile. Well, no, for the, for the volunteers. But for the patients, their just heart has to be beating, right? That's true. I mean, I don't, we haven't had someone come in on a ventilator, but we probably would accept them. But you don't have to have, pa you don't have, to have papers. This is for human beings. And we are here to serve people in the name of Jesus. Now, two, two, two quick areas. We are almost out of time. We have gone so fast. But um, volunteer impact, just two minutes on this. How does Pathway to Health impact the volunteers who come? And I'll just let anybody who'd like to comment on this important subject. Because um, we've got a lot of people that are wondering, can I give up three days of my Christmas vacation to come? What does Pathway do to the volunteers? Ken, maybe I'll, I'll yeah, since you've got okay. the mic, I'll, I'll well, go to I, you. Well, I'll just say what I said last night. Uh, the first time I went to an event was, was San Francisco. And uh, the, couldn't have gone before that because there wasn't one. Uh, but as I looked out across the group of people there, I saw people across the spectrum of Adventism, people who some cons call liberals and other people who some call conservatives. And, and I mean, just every brand of Adventist there in that room, and you know what? Everybody was getting along. They were working together side by side because they had a, a mission that was driving them unitedly. And uh, I think that some of those things that we believe divide us will kind of not be quite so important if we get refocused on sharing the love of God with our neighbors. Amen, amen, praise the Lord. Now, before we go off this, Dr. Yagana, do you have a comment? Because I know this is an important topic for you. I was just gonna say that it's such a true blessing to you because you actually get to see lives change because um, you get to tell them about um, our Lord and Savior. Um, Sister White says that if the medical missionary work is going to be one of the finishing works of um, the last days, that we all need to take hold of it. And this is true medical missionary work. She goes further to say that if they will reason that if you have such good judgment regarding health matters, matters they, that they will also accept whatever religious things that you have to tell them. And so as Jesus taught us in his example, he met the people where they were, he met their needs, and then he told them about himself who can supply all of their needs and give them eternal life. Amen, amen. Dr. Leela, a volunteer story, an impact, changed, it's changed whole practices, it's changed physicians, it's changed dentists. Absolutely, you know, I remember in San Antonio, um, it was, Unbelievable. We had our, our, actually, I'll just tell you, it's our head of our cooking demonstration, uh, Diana Fleming, and she had been an amazing, amazing uh, nutritionist for many, many years, but she had made her practice, for one reason or another, entirely devoid of spirituality. It was, it was focused on health. And she came to Pathway, and with tears streaming down her face, she came up to me and she said, you know what? She said, this has changed my life. I am now changing my entire practice. She's a PhD in nutrition. I am going back and I am completely changing Amen. everything. Praise God, praise God. And we're, we're out of time just about, but, but Dr. Leela, just a quick comment, because not only does it impact the volunteers, but it impacts entire communities. You know, we've been to um, San Antonio, Spokane, Los Angeles. We've seen, and, and maybe you should just, because we said we would, we'd go back to San Francisco. Tell us really quick that story of how it impacted that so city official. So you the gentleman that I mentioned initially, how we ended up at the armory, the, the unusual location of how we ended up there. And the, the man's name was Mr. Bevan Dufty. He is uh, assistant to the mayor there, Mayor Edwin Lee in, in the city of San Francisco. And after he realized what we were doing as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, providing this free, unbelievable health care to his citizens, completely without any strings attached, nothing, everyone receiving love, he came to the event, he walked through the event, he walked up to one of our administrators of the Pacific Union Conference and he said, you know what? Again, clearly impacted, he said, you know what? He said, I may be a homosexual Jew, but I am the number one supporter of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. If you ever Amen. need 
anything in the future, you come to me. Amen. Amen. God is working. God is working. And I just want to encourage us, encourage those watching. If you want to have the best Christmas ever, I guarantee it, the absolute best Christmas ever, be the gift this Christmas and you will receive a bigger gift than you could ever give. Amen. God is going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine here in Phoenix. Amen? So, so, so I would just, well, first of all, thank you to our panelists. It's been a great panel. Amen? Thank you for your responses. We could talk so much more, so many more stories, but we want to encourage you to sign up to be a volunteer if you've not done so already. Encourage your friends. We need 1,500 more volunteers, Dr. Leela, as I understand. We need churches to be HICs. Now is the time because Jesus is coming soon, and he is calling each one of us to show his love to those around us. Amen? So um, we're going to ask uh, Brother Glenn to pray for us to wrap up our panel this morning. Shall we pray? Our loving Heavenly Father, it is always nice to work for you. It's always nice to be part of the movement. We believe, Heavenly Father, that we are in the end of time. Lord, please forgive us from all the iniquities that we have committed against thee. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of unity. This best pathways to health. I believe with all my heart that this will, this activity will unite us. Help us, O oh God, to always depend on you, and may your name be glorified. And I ask, O oh God, that you will bring more volunteers, that you will continue to talk to them, and at the end of this program, we will always glorify your name. May the blessings of heaven be upon us all, and we are excited to see the result of this program, because we love you. And we want to glorify your name. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen.